Hi everyone, my name is Alex. I am president of BCU Mental Health Awareness Society. Over the past few weeks, the exec and I have been planning a film to kick off our Christmas campaign called I Am Aware. This film looks at the lives of those directly and indirectly affected by mental health issues. Filming has been such a long journey, with clips being shot in Birmingham, Coventry and Bristol. This film is dedicated to my dad who sadly passed away this July. The people in this film are students from around Birmingham. We hope you enjoy it. My name is Peter, I'm from Manchester and I'm a music composition student at Birmingham Conservatoire, which is also part of BCU. Hi, I'm James, I'm from London, just had to think about that for a second, um, and I'm doing sound engineering at BCU. Hi, my name's Vicky, I am currently a textile design student in my final year, I won't say third year because it certainly isn't. Um, I live at home with my husband and my two children. I'm Jess, I'm from Solihull, I'm a psychology student from Birmingham City University. So, I have a couple of friends who have mental health issues, um, so that's kind of where my exposure to it comes from. Uh, mostly it's kind of them talking to me about things that are going on in their life. Yeah. So out of all, out of all the uh, mental health issues I, I've faced with, I've been faced with depression out of not the most. Um, and that was through friends and unfortunately also my mum. Um, but I didn't actually know about my mum until I was 16, um, when I found out that she had a therapist. I originally suffered from depression after a few traumatic events at home, and um, it took a long time to realise that I was ill. Um, it first started setting when I came to university, uh, which was back in 2012. And it wasn't until I was about halfway through my first year that I realised I wasn't very well. I stopped attending university, I wouldn't hand in work, and generally just kind of withdrew from life apart from looking after my, just my daughter I had at the time then. Um, then things started to change for the better at home and we got settled again and I started to feel alright. And then I fell pregnant with my son, which meant I took a year out from university. And he was, it was quite a traumatic birth, I won't bore you with the details. And he, from that I had PTSD, post traumatic stress disorder, and postnatal depression, um, along with the depression that I was still being treated for originally. Apart from knowing people with uh, mental illnesses. I also volunteer at a hospital where I'm exposed to uh, young children with um, illnesses like depression, anxiety and psychosis. Um, and I've really found with them the thing that helps them the most is just being there for them. Like if they want to talk about their issues then you know just listen to them. If they want a distracting activity to kind of distract them from like their thoughts or their emotions then give them an activity to do, give them, you know, a colouring book or a, a word search. Um, and that really applies to how you um, how you deal with like your family or one of your friends that has a has an illness. Like if if they want to talk to you then you know go out for a walk. Um, just listen to them. They all they want is like to listen, to have someone listen to you to them. Sorry, I'm a minute. <laughs> So with my mum, I don't, I don't know if I did help her that much at all. Um, I guess just you could say the cheesy lines of just me having a childhood and everything probably helped. But um, with friends and stuff, so one friend in particular who was coming out of depression just as I knew them. Um, I guess, if anything, it was just being loving and supportive to, towards them and understanding when necessary. I think just talking things through, being a second opinion and 
you know, and being a kind of shoulder to lean on whenever needed. Um, this has now, thanks to a charity in Coldfield, I am mostly better. I'm no longer on antidepressants. I received counselling, uh, CBD counselling, and I still suffer with anxiety, um, definitely on a day-to-day -day basis, and it can affect silly things through to catastrophising about something that probably won't even happen. Um, but you know, we get through it, and I just want people to know that there is support at university if you need to access it. To be honest, I can't really remember. With my mum, it was just, I knew she had a therapist. I found out through conversations, just in the car and stuff like that. And not until later did I realise that, oh, she's got a, a therapist. That may mean she's got depression. Um, but with friends, it was just a, not, not much of a reaction really. It was just not surprised, not unsurprised really, just a sort of neutral reaction of like, thank you for telling me, um, and thank you for letting me know. I know, I've tried to stay calm because getting all in it is about everything never makes anything better. Um, and just, you know, again, talk things through, work out, you know, kind of plan things, make it all seem like it's going to work. So what I found um, with with volunteering, with having friends, with um, with, men with with mental illnesses, I found that um, all you need to do is just listen to them, be there for them. Um, if if they want to chat, then just sit down, like ask what's going on. If they want to, if they want a distraction from their daily thoughts, from their emotions, then you know, um, give them a coloring book or give them an activity to do, and that really applies with. Um, friend or family member that's going through this, to go through depression or anxiety, um, if they want to go for a walk, go for a walk with them, if they want to go to the cinema, catch a movie with them, just do anything that makes them feel valued and kind of appreciated. But also I think that you should know when to kind of respect their decision to not want contact, like if they don't want to talk to you, don't press them, because sometimes all they need is time to think. My name is Alex, I'm originally from Coventry and I'm a final year computer science student at BCU. My name is Samantha, I'm originally from Coventry and I'm studying access to higher education course in engineering at Birmingham Metropolitan College. Okay, so I'm Isaac, I'm originally from Chichester, West Sussex and I'm studying English at Birmingham City University. My name is Anthony and I come from Rugby and I am doing the BA Primary Ed course at BCU in Year 1. Hi, I'm Jo Goodman, your Student Union President. Born and raised in Dudley, I came to Birmingham City in 2012 to study Textile Design and graduated in 2015. I then became the Vice President Voice and this year I'm your President. I've been suffering with anxiety and depression for around five years. Last year my depression became worse and one of my friends referred me to the university student services. After the death of my mum in 2012, I was soon diagnosed with depression and anxiety and put on fluoroxetine. Fluoroxetine is the antidepressant that I was put on and was made to take daily to help my anxiety and depression. I recently came off it last year after the help that I received and the support that I had around me. I suffer with anxiety, depression and psychosis. So in 2012, during my GCSE year, um, my final year of GCSEs, I was getting regular anxiety attacks. I'd have two or three sing like every single day, um, and I eventually I went to see my GP about it. They did kind of they kind of didn't really take it very seriously. They kind of just put it down to exam stress, and that was that was all that was going on. And so I kind of just struggled through without very really much support at that point in time until around Easter time 2012 and I attempted suicide for the first time and so 
and was admitted to hospital, obviously, and I ended up speaking to someone from CAMS, which is the Child and Ad Adolescent Mental Health Services. Um, and that was a psychiatric nurse. I saw her a few times for CBT, which is Cognitive Behaviour Therapy. and my mental health took a huge turn for the worse and after about a month, uh, sixth form, I dropped out just because I was massively depressed. I was having anxiety attacks every single day still and I just I couldn't cope. So I started seeing a, I'm not quite sure what the word is, but it was through the charity mind and I kind of, I just went and saw her every week, once a week, and we just kind of talked. She was, she described herself as a professional friend, which I thought was quite cute. Um, and I ended up being referred back to CAMS because I had started to self-harm quite regularly, and I'd also started having hallucinations. So I, I was referred back to CAMS, and they, that's when I got my diagnosis of anxiety and depression and they started me on a fluoxetine and maybe sort of a month or so after that I attempted suicide for the second time and that was when I received my psychosis diagnosis which came about because I was seeing things a lot which is basically what psychosis is and it was having a massive impact on my life it was quite terrifying and I'm not quite sure how I dealt with that but so that was probably November 2012 and from CAMS I was referred to a specialist psychosis team who I was with for like three years and I've been on various medications, I've been on so many antidepressants I don't even know what they are called or called. Um, I've been on antipsychotics, I've been on anti-anxiety medication and I've received various therapies. away uh, at the age of 15 um, and I really struggled to deal with the grief. Um, I was suicidal at one point and um, ended up being, going to hospital because they were afraid I might commit suicide. Um, 
for me, my depression was very hard to deal with. Um, most days, I would not even leave my bed because I couldn't face the world. And my room at that time was a very small box room uh, because I felt more comfortable in an enclosed space than I did out in the open and it was very dark because I had very thick curtains and I remember that was my sort of my dark paradise. Um, I went through a lot when I was depressed. Um, not only was I dealing with the grief of losing my mum, I also had an injury which stopped me from pursuing a career in music, which was what I really wanted to do. Um, and it was just a really black time in my life. Um, I eventually realised what was wrong. Um, at the time, I remember not wanting to do anything. I was kind of in denial as well that I had depression. I didn't think. I just thought what I was going through was just my normal life. I didn't think about it in terms of being depressed until I got to the suicidal stage and it was thanks to the doctors in the hospital that I began to realise that I was suffering from a mental illness and after a while in hospital um, they I, re I realised that that was what I was actually suffering from depression and I actually vocalised it um, and every day I would always say I am depressed to simply acknowledge that that, that there was something wrong um, I had intensive counselling therapy. Um, I don't remember much of it because it was such a difficult time. I've blanked it out. Um, I don't remember talking much about it. Um, Eventually, after a long, after a long course of counselling, I and also antidepressants, uh, I managed to turn my life around. I managed to finish my A levels barely and uh, get a job. Um, and the job really helped in settling my head and it gave me a good sense of routine which to this day has been a really important thing for me and I kind of pulled myself out because I like to help others and I think I went into a job which was very customer focused so I was always helping customers out and by helping them out I helped myself out. Um, well, another major factor in my recovery was my dad who was incredible. Um, 
because at the time I didn't realise or I didn't, you know, you don't, th at that age when you're 15, 16, 17, you don't realise that, um, but I, you know, I came to the realisation that my dad was struggling at the same time, but somehow he managed to help me, um, and he was a constant support throughout that time, and I'm really, truly grateful. Because I don't think without him, I would be where I am now. I would still be okay, but I wouldn't be happy like I am now. Having depression made me feel like I didn't want to get out of bed in the morning and I had no reason to. I always felt like people were talking about me. I felt like they knew about my issues and my anxiety increased over my time here at BCU. Having depression also made me feel like I was the lowest person around and I felt like I was in a pit and I couldn't get out. A lot of people describe it as the black flog, fog, <laughs> not flog, fog, and I always felt like that was over me. Since then, I went to see my doctor and they have given me a prescription of antidepressants. They have helped me quite a bit but there are still times when I'm feeling down or don't want to go out. I've also been seeing the mental health team at BCU, which has been a safe place for me to talk about my issues. My anxiety and depression became worse again this July as my dad suddenly passed away. Me and my family are still struggling with what happened this year and it will be even tougher for me as I know that my dad will never see me graduate. Um, I feel I'm quite lucky because I have very supportive friends, a very supportive family. I have people that I can turn to so when, when there's no sort of medical help or anywhere I could go I I have friends that I can text, I have friends I can phone, I have people I can just talk to, I can <laughs> I can just, you know, go and knock on my roommate's door and say, hey, I'm not feeling good. Do you want to talk? Can we talk for a bit? And then we'll just sit and eat chocolate or ice cream. <laughs> and he's giving me really good looks right now. <laughs> but yeah, I am. I've got I've got good people around me, people I can talk to that I feel comfortable with that don't judge me who I just I can just turn around and say hey I'm not doing okay help recently I've been having good days and bad days however my depression has improved and I'm feeling happier in general when help is not available I usually go on Facebook and YouTube to see what people are getting up to I also live with a very supportive flatmate and when I'm feeling down late at night we're always able to talk things through um, so I, struff, uh, uh, I suffer from anxiety and uh, so that means that basically I overthink everything that I say and everything I do and I get really anxious even in calm situations so like even if I'm just having a normal conversation with someone that I've known for a very long time I will overthink everything that I'm saying and sometimes then I will say the wrong thing and feel like really bad that I said that certain thing or I will just get really anxious about I don't know about the situations that are around me and the people that are around me and what I'm saying and what I'm doing. Um, I, I don't know, it makes me feel quite alone, I think, most of the time. And I think anxiety is an unknown mental health uh, issue that people don't really recognise as a mental health issue because they just think that people overthink everything. Um, so that's my story. Um, the way I got help was through just talking to people about it and actually opening up about the fact that I, I feel like I have anxiety and I feel like um, I, I really should you know get some help so I started talking over with my parents and with friends around me and they were really supportive of me and they said um, you know when you feel like you're getting anxious you know just just deep breaths stay calm and don't don't overthink what you're saying just you know just say it how you want to say it don't don't go oh but that might be right that might be wrong that might be wrong and that might be right etc etc um so when help isn't available and i'm feeling anxious i tend to just go you know in my in my own head just like calm down like there's nothing to worry about just say it as it is say it how you want to say it and don't get stressed I always knew I was depressed, but I never seeked help. It wasn't until someone told me that they could see the symptoms within me that I went to see my doctor. 
it took a lot of courage for me to go and it felt like the hardest thing that I've ever done in my life. But I went to my doctor and I was put on the tablets. Um, it didn't get better for about three months, it actually got worse, but then once the tablets started to kick in, it got better. I was also advised to see a counsellor um, and seek the support of my friends and family around me. There's also an amazing um, student services here at BCU, the counselling and wellbeing team who see so many students um, and really do support students who are struggling whilst they're here at university. Hi, I'm Charles Loney. I am from Manchester, currently studying at Birmingham City University, studying music at the Conservatoire. Um, mental health issues that you face every day, I mean, in an environment such as music, there are so many people that are just under pressure all the time. So, like, pretty much you sit in a classroom with your classmates and, like, half the room suffering from depression, from anxiety. I've had friends who suffered with them, and actually, and I didn't even know. Um, I've had friends suffering with um, bulimia, all manner of mental health issues. Um, at the moment, I have a close friend who's suffering from anxiety, um, and it's kind of what do you do to support them? Um, I, the best thing that I can do is be there to not be kind of the person that tells me everything's going to be okay because that's the last thing you want to hear when you have anxiety and stuff like that because it's the last thing you believe. Just to be a friend, to listen, to offer wise advice. I think one thing that I've started to do is challenge. So, um, say this friend might have a certain problem, I might then kind of ask questions back at that friend to kind of get her to think outside of the situation, to think from an outside perspective. I find that that helps. Um, and the relationship with her is a good one where I can, I can do that and it doesn't kind of jeopardise that too. That was it. Isn't it? Yeah, you, you nailed it. Sweet. Hi, um, my name is Frankie. I'm from Nottingham and I am studying applied performance at Bowen City University next year. Um, I have bipolar disorder and along with that anxiety and insomnia. Um, and I've been with mental health services for several years. Um, I've had depression as a teenager um, and got a bit better, got worse, got better. My brother died last year um, and I went into my worst depression yet um, and when I came back home from university I started to get better and then I started to get too better um, and I ended up going to hospital because um, I thought I could fly Though God was telling me I could fly, I was going to take my brother to heaven and he'd be made alive again and we were going to be great. I thought my parents were aliens um, and was real wrong. So I went in the hospital and that's when I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder um, and that's when things started to click into place and where I started to get help. I've got um, a CPM now from the early intervention team in Nottingham um, and I've got more regular appointments with my psychiatrist right medication and the right support um, at the right times um, but when that support isn't available I like to do things like having a bath and just binge watching shows, um, blanket parties with my cat, just lots of blankets, um, drinking tea, watching Ellen DeGeneres as well. Um, yeah. I hope this film has helped you out. Like I said earlier, if you need any help, come and contact us or even contact the university. They have some excellent services in place. I think the waiting list is quite long, but they are working through it very quickly. If you still need help, there should be links down below in the description, or you can come and contact me and the exec any time of day via Facebook or email. Our email should be at the end of this video and in the description. This video is the start of our Christmas campaign, so keep an eye out on Facebook and Twitter for posts in our campaign. Finally, a message from everyone who took part in this film. I'm aware. I am aware. I am aware. I am aware. I am aware. My new I am aware. 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 I am aware.